Thank you for joining us for this MDA Engage Community Webinar on Adaptive Sports and Recreation. My name is Kayla White, and I'm a Community Education Specialist at MDA, and we are thrilled to have you join us today for this important and educational webinar. The webinar today is part of our larger MDA Engage Community programs, which focus on bringing the neuromuscular disease community together around education and resources. Be sure to visit the MDA Engage section on mda.org for updates on upcoming virtual education events. We are recording today's event and we'll be posting it to the mda.org website for on-demand viewing to ensure that those who are not able to join us live today are able to access this information. Please know that all phone lines have been muted, but we will be having a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. Please be sure to utilize the Q&A window to type in your questions. If you hover your cursor over the bottom of the screen, you'll see a question mark, and you can click on that and enter your question. You don't need to wait until the Q&A session to chat in your questions. Feel free to type those in as questions come up during the webinar. Before we begin, I would like to say thank you to our speakers today, Dr. Kaylee McCauley-Sayer, Andrew Morris, and Jamie Zalea. And you'll meet them shortly. For over 70 years, MDA has led the way in accelerating research, advancing care, and advocating for the support of our families. MDA's mission is to empower people living with muscular dystrophy, ALS, and related neuromuscular diseases to live longer, more independent lives. We break our mission into these four pillars. Care, through our national network of MDA care centers providing multidisciplinary care across the U.S., we support individuals and families from day one of their journey. Champion, through our advocacy and education efforts, we empower families with information and resources. Catalyst, through our investments in research, we are furthering advancements in treatment discoveries and community. Through programs like summer camp, community education, and our community events, we are helping individuals and families build supportive connections and relationships. If you haven't already done so, we invite you to join the MDA community by registering with us. Please see the link in the chat. Before we begin, we're going to review the objectives for today's webinar. Today, we want to provide an overview of adaptive sports and recreation opportunities, help you understand the potential benefits of participating in adaptive sports and recreation, and to share resources to help you access adaptive sports and recreation. Now, it's my privilege to introduce today's speakers, Jamie Zalea, Andrew Morris, and Kaylee McCauley-Sayer. Dr. Sayer, is, Dr. Kaylee McCauley Sayer joined Move United in April of 2022 as the Director of Member Services. She has oversight of the Member Services team, which includes organizational membership, individual membership, insurance, and risk management. She brings 15 years of experience in higher education administration to Move United, including experiences in college athletics, accessibility, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Dr. Macaulay Sayer earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Exercise and Health Promotion from the University of New England, where she played softball and field hockey. She earned a Master of Science in Sports Management from East Stroudsburg University of Pennsylvania and a doctorate in edu Educational Leadership, Higher Education, with a specialization in Kinesiology from Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. Dr. Macaulay Sayer, I'll now turn the time over to you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Kayla, for that great introduction. Um, I appreciate the invitation to be here today. And uh, thank you so much for all the participants for joining us as well. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. So, um, again, my name is Kaylee Mahali Sayer. I use she, her pronouns. And I serve as the director of member services uh, for Move United. And so what I do is I oversee our individual membership programs, our group membership, and um, our insurance and risk management program. Um, our agenda for today, um, I'm going to give a super brief overview of adaptive sport and recreation for those of you who um, are not familiar with adaptive sport. I'm going to talk a little bit about Move United and the work that we do as an organization. I'll discuss our, our membership network, how we're structured as an organization, what the requirements are in our membership organizations, and um, what the benefits are for you all if you were to want to get involved with one of our Move United member organizations. 
So what is adaptive sport? Um, you might also have heard of parasport. Um, so adaptive sport or parasports can be used interchangeably. Um, are sports played by people with either a physical and or intellectual disability? Um, many times in adaptive sport, what we see are adaptions, um, adaptations to the rules, equipment, or field of play. Um, in pop culture, um, many of you may have seen on TV or maybe in person, um, the Paralympics, uh, probably the most well-known um, adaptive sport uh, competition internationally. Um, you may also have heard of the Invictus Games or the Warrior Games, and these are just examples of um, kind of high visibility adaptive sport competitions that you may have heard of. Uh, but Move United, we work with, um, we're a nonprofit that works with nonprofits all across the United States. And um, these organizations that are part of our membership network are in local communities, providing adaptive sport and recreation opportunities to folks, you know, right there in your community, in your neighborhood, um, anywhere from working with littles who are, you know, three, four, five years old, um, up to adults, um, and along the range of, um, of competition. So from recreation to really high sport performance, where you do have those athletes going on uh, the Paralympic route. Um, so we we serve uh, member organizations kind of anywhere in between that spectrum. A little bit more about who we are um, as an organization. Again, we're a nonprofit nationwide community network. We have at, at this time we have 207 member organizations across 45 states. Um, serving more than 120,000 individuals with disabilities um, on an annual basis. Um, the beginning of Move United was started in 1956, and uh, the, our organization has been doing work in the adaptive sports space um, since then. Um, so we've been a lot around for a long time now. Um, Move United, as it, it exists today, um, is the result of a merger that happened in 2020 um, with two adaptive sport organizations, Adaptive Sports USA and Disabled Sports USA. So you may have to be familiar with those names, um, but the two organizations got together and they merged because they realized that they could do better work together as one organization than working separately. So we are now Move United as of 2020. Um, we are respected as the national leader um, in adaptive sports by the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee as an affiliate, and also on the President's Council on Physical Fitness. And then uh, highly efficient, um, again, 66 years of experience. Um, we're not new to this game, um, and we've been around for a long time providing adaptive sport opportunities. We also, as an organization, got our start um, with serving military veterans, and that has con consistently stayed pretty consistent with our, our vision and mission and the values of our organization. So we're considered the, the leading military provider of uh, adaptive sports rehabilitation uh, for military veterans. Just wanted to give you a visual map of uh, where our Move United uh, member organizations are. So again, 207 local organizations across 45 states. Um, at this time, we have 72% of all Americans are within 50 miles, a uh, 50 mile radius of a Move United uh, chapter. And by 2028, when the uh, Olympics and Paralympics are in, um, California. Um, we want to have that goal to be 90% of all Americans within a 50 mile radius of a Move United chapter. So we're doing a lot of work on the membership side to make sure that, you know, we're extending our network and providing more opportunities and greater accessibility to adaptive sport and recreation for folks here in, in the U.S. A little bit about our, our member levels. Uh, we have five different member levels at this time. So 
as you're looking at, you know, our Move United organizations, you'll see chapters, adaptive clubs, inclusive clubs, event partners, and uh, our new affiliate level. Um, these are just ways that we um, kind of break down the size of an organization, the number of participants that they serve, and the way in which they serve uh, athletes and, and participants in adaptive sport. I just wanted to kind of bring that to a highlight there. And then our affiliates and event partners are more of large scale events that are partnering with us um, to hold competitions. Um, and affiliates are more of government agencies, uh, foundations. Um, those are folks that are supporting the mission of adaptive sport and are affiliated with Move United. I wanted to cover um, the requirements. Uh, so what, what does it take to be a Move United member organization, right? Um, so some things that we look for, we're looking for direct sports programming with athletes with permanent disabilities. We want to make sure that these organizations are demonstrating uh, programs that are offered in a safe and accessible environment, that they have sound financial guidelines, that they have a competent uh, governance structure and a board that's governing their operations, that they have uh, general liability insurance, and uh, they're following our sport protection policy. And the reason I bring this up is because as an athlete, as someone that's looking to um, maybe participate in adaptive sport and recreation, um, if you are uh, engaging with a Move United organization as an athlete, you know that you're getting a safe and effective and professional experience from the programming that's being offered by our Move United member organizations. And I think that's really important as you're looking for ways to engage in sport and recreation. So if you're sitting here on the call and you're like, wow, really just, I wanna find ways to get involved with adaptive sport and recreation. How do I do that? The first step is going to our website, moveunitedsport.org. There are so many uh, resources on the website. Please take a look, um, browse at your leisure. Uh, one of the great features is you can search our database of 70 plus sports um, and recreational opportunities. Um, you can also filter those sports by location and find the nearest Move United organization that's closest to you. Um, or a particular location that you're you're looking for. We also have an education hub where you can learn um, online at your own pace. Um, and we have uh, on-demand at-home fitness classes as well that are open and available to everybody um, on our website. Um, it's really cool. Um, you can take the classes online, set up your computer, or tablet, or phone. Um, and do those classes um, with different adaptations right in your own home. They're, they're really awesome classes. We also have some educational opportunities um, that you can engage in as an individual. We host an annual education conference um, each spring. This year, it will be in May 2023 in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and that's open for anyone to sign up and register and travel to, to Louisville if you're interested in learning more. It's a professional uh, conference setting where there's um, a schedule of different speakers, workshops, um, uh, clinics, et cetera. It's um, so informative and um, I would highly recommend education conference if you're looking to learn more about adaptive sport and recreation. Additionally, we have an uh, event that's coming up called Ski Spectacular. So if you're into skiing and snowboarding, um, that event information is on our website as well. Um, if you're interested in becoming an instructor, uh, we have courses for instructors as well. Um, and another uh, highly anticipated event, uh, Ski Spectacular. Education Hub, I mentioned, where you can do uh, education courses online. Um, I also wanted to talk about our inclusive playbook. 
um, inclusive playbook is uh, specific to um, children ages pre-K through sixth grade. And it's a, a way um, that teachers or folks just working in the community with kids can help uh, educate um, children on uh, disabilities in general, but also adaptive sport and recreation. And that's a free resource that's available um, on our website as well. The other great benefit of being uh, connected to Move United is we have uh, multiple forms of communication where we're sharing out um, different opportunities for individuals, whether it's grants funding or different uh, local or national events in the adaptive sports space. Um, we also have uh, different uh, webinars and speakers that happen. Um, so lots of great opportunities to get engaged. Um, and we have multiple communication streams that we're uh, pushing out on a pretty regular basis. So we have a directory of our, our members, monthly newsletter, uh, grant opportunities, training opportunities. And we also have a magazine, um, uh, old school print magazine that comes to your door um, and you can flip through and Lots of great photos and articles and uh, resources there in the magazine as well. So these are all things that you can sign up for on our website. All right, so my uh, membership team here, uh, myself, uh, Ryan, Bree, and Dana, uh, we make up the membership team. And what we do is work with our member organizations on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also... Uh, work with individuals as they're getting connected to member organizations if they're looking for resources. So um, special shout out to Dana, who's uh, on the call listening in today, um, and Bree and Ryan too. I'm not sure if they joined in, but um, uh, this is a, a great team of folks that are getting the job done, making sure we have uh, the best member organizations around the country in our 45 states that we're in now. And uh, I will take questions at the end um, in the Q&A, but feel free to drop any questions in the chat. Um, this is my contact information. Um, so I'll leave it up here for a, a second. I'll also drop my email address in the, the chat as well. Um, but that's all for me for right now. And with that, I'm gonna toss it over. I think Andrew Morris is next. Dr. McCauley Sayer, thank you so much. That was wonderful information. And um, we're so excited that um, our community can go to Move United um, for all of those great resources. Um, to everybody here, it actually appears that um, our second speaker, Andrew Morse, um, is unavailable at the moment. Um, so we are actually gonna gear, uh, switch gears and go into a discussion. And let me, I'm gonna share my screen to introduce our next um, speaker. So like I said, we're now gonna to turn to a discussion with MDA community member, Jamie Zalea. Teacher and advocate, Jamie Zalea shares that without the MDA, he would not be where he is today. Born with a rare neuromuscular disease, he grew up as part of the MDA family. Through MDA's advocacy, Jamie has had the opportunity to go to the nation's capital and meet state senators and members of Congress to advocate for policies that serve individuals with disabilities. As an advocate, the most significant benefit I've received is to support and help others understand their rights and their communities. Many people with disabilities face discrimination on a daily basis and need advocates to help them in their time of need. Being a volunteer galvanizes me to encourage others to do the same, says Jamie. He believes that one of the greatest benefits of volunteering is that it forges strong community relations and engages individuals to achieve mission and purpose in life. Before we begin, Jamie would like to share a video about his participation in adaptive sports. And I hope I have everything right to where you can um, both see and hear this. So let, let's try it. Good job. See. 
Oh, I got it. <laughs> hey, get there, Jamie. Get there, Jamie. Beat it out. Beat it out. So, Jamie, we are so glad to have you with us today. Um, for everybody here, I'm so excited for you all to hear uh, more about Jamie and his experiences with adaptive sports and recreation. Um, and meeting with him a couple times, I can tell how passionate he is about this area. So, Jamie, if you um, would don't care, would you just care to share a bit about yourself and, and how you got involved in adaptive sports and recreation? Absolutely. Thank you all for the wonderful introduction and thank you for the MDA allowing me to be part of a wonderful webinar that will hopefully inspire people to become part of wonderful programming out there that will allow them to discover their unique talents and aptitudes in the world of adaptive sports. Absolutely. Well, about, two, uh, about three and a half years ago, um, as my neuromuscular disease became um, a more challenging, um, a challenging goal for me to overachieve and at times really deal with and, and avoid depression and avoid sorrow in my life, I looked up organizations in the New York City area that involve sports. Now, I was always a high school athlete into college, and when my neuromuscular disease um, became a bit more um, prominent in my life, it really atrophied other parts of my body. So in my latter years, um, my, my, my daughter, who's an actress, actually told me, you know, Dad, what, you played sports. Why don't you just get into adaptive sports? And she researched a wonderful organization called Wheelchair Sports Federation in New York. So she quickly researched it and I made a call and connected with gentlemen and um, that were playing in um, in Victory Park in Queens, and quickly I got hooked. I I I felt like I was part of a safe haven. Um, I felt like it was just all natural, and I forged relationships with veterans and other para 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 sports um, individuals who were playing and I quickly got hooked and I just got so addicted to playing. I kept going and going um, and I quickly went into tennis, quickly went into hockey, into lacrosse and doing current boxing now. And um, the cool thing about these venues is I became um, healthier in my mind in the sense of um, I started thinking positively, started thinking that there was hope in my life. And um, with that said as well, I started to lose a lot of weight in my life. And I became, um, my habits and healthy eating um, were disciplined. And I, I, I feel like I'm the fittest I've ever been in my life. So I'm, I'm totally committed to adaptive sports. And I'm also... Um, recruiting other players um, that I see who are disabled and bringing them to basketball, bringing them to the gym, bringing them to workout and yoga classes and making sure that 
they have opportunities to discover their unique talents in the world of sports. Being a part of the MDA and its mission statement has enabled me to advocate at our nation's capital on a yearly basis, working with Mark Fisher and the wonderful advocates for the team and representing issues to lawmakers. But being a part of the adaptive sports world has forged wonderful relationships for me and community members who are disabled. And um, in speaking with MDA um, personnel and, and offices, I, I would love to see more of the neuromuscular disease community be part of a, the world of adaptive sports because not, it's, it's not only fun, it forges wonderful relationships and cultivates a wonderful, wonderful safe haven for all of us to come together and help one another. And as well as find recreation activities that we all would love to do in a, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, according to anyone's timeline. But it really, it really is healthy, it's fun, and I would love to see so many people part of it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Jamie, for sharing that. Um, so, Jamie, this question is for you and Dr. McCauley Sayer. If you have insight, feel free to jump in. This is just going to be a, a general discussion. And if anybody attending has questions, feel free to chat those in. But, Jamie, you said you'd like to see more people with neuromuscular disease participating in these sports. So what advice do either of you or both of you have for families or individuals on how to get started on this path of adaptive sports and recreation? And how can you find the right fit for you as an individual? Haley, you want to take it and then I'll just piggyback off you? Sure. Um, I mean, I think I'll speak to my own experience. Um, as someone, I, I worked in college athletics for a very long time, uh, the length of my career, and then transitioned over to um, a student life role where I worked in an accessibility office. And so now with, with working at Move United, I'm kind of combining those worlds. But over the last six months, you know, as the adaptive sport world has been really new to me. And so I think one thing that was helpful for me was just going out to some of the local events and just seeing what it was all about. And I think that's probably a good um, piece of advice for athletes as well. It's like if you're um, an athlete yourself or maybe you're a parent of a child who's interested in sport, like, you know, there are so many events that happen locally. Just get out there and, you know, start meeting people and and talking to folks that are participating and, um, you know, seeing what are out there. Like that's when I was presenting, I talked about how we have 70 plus sport and recreation opportunities um, on our website. Like there are so many opportunities to get involved with, but you might not know exactly what you like or what's in your area, what's available. So um, just doing a bit of research and getting to know people that are engaging locally is probably a great first step, but um, I can't speak to my experience as an athlete, just as a, a staff member joining the adaptive sport world. Right. What do you think, Jamie? Well, and that's, that's wonderful information. I appreciate it. And I agree with it. And in the neuromuscular disease community, every neuromuscular disease is rare and it's different. So for example, I'm limited in my lower extremities, but I'm strong upper body. And being an athlete and going to um, Chicago this year and being participating of the World Series for wheelchair softball, um, I was able to meet so many other people with disabilities. And one thing that um, good coaches and good teammates learn to do is we learn to see what our limits are, where our strengths are, and where our weaknesses are. And we, we come together as a team. So... Those who have neuromuscular disease, you know your bodies, you know what you can do, but you'll be surprised what you could accomplish when working together as a team or doing some sort of adaptive sports because even pickleball is making a big wave right now um, in the adaptive sports world. So you know what your limits are, you know your body, you know that some neuromuscular diseases are more involved, but um, also as parents who are concerned and 
would say, well, I don't know if my child can do this and do that. I would say don't limit your child um, and partake of the 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 sports world as well and um and and the coaches that are involved um would also care enough to know that um your child um would would be part of a wonderful team see when i joined um sophomore there were certain things that i know i could do and the coaches that um were, uh, were my coaches knew where my limits were so they worked with me to strengthen areas of my life and in my game, same as for basketball, lacrosse. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm able to gain strength in areas that I thought I never had. But it, was, it came with training. It came with, with commitment and dedication. And, um, and, and I learned to just conquer my fears and, um, and utilizing my strength. So uh, I, I know it's different for the neuromuscular disease community because every disease is very rare and every disease is very different. Um, but um, I would, I would, I would, I would also counsel into saying, try it, um, see where your limits are and, and engage um, good, good sports departments. Like even you're, you're in the New York city area, there's a wonderful organization called the wheelchair sports federation that works with all types of disabilities and, and, and they don't turn anyone down. So I hope that answered the question. It did, thank you both so much. So Jamie, how do you, how would you say that being a participant in adaptive sports and recreation, how has that impacted you? For example, your confidence levels and just your overall life experiences? Well, I'll tell you, um, my confidence level has been impacted and augmented through the roof. I feel like um, uh, there's no fear. You know, in the, having a, a disability, we often um, get looks, um, often feel discriminated against, often get um, um, times um, shut down from other areas of life, even though we thought these things were overdone, uh, were, were done with, we still feel it that way. But when you get to be part of a sports adaptive world and you see that there's a spectrum of disabilities out there, there's such a welcoming, such a safe haven, and there's no judgment. Um, you just feel part of a team, part of a family. And that bolsters your confidence and robustly makes you want to take on the world and go into any challenge and say that you can accomplish anything. And it's amazing that adaptive sports are out there for the disabled community that allows you to practice this on a daily basis, whether on the field, whether with your teammates, whether there's a ball wanting to be hit with a bat, uh, it, your, your confidence level just builds up. And holistically, I think that's a great thing. And this is why I wanted um, expanded upon in the, in the MDA world with the neuromuscular disease community. Confidence is there for you to grab and it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to partake in. That's great, thank you, Jamie. So my next question can go to either of you or both of you, um, and Jamie, you kind of touched on this, you know, sometimes parents um, might be hesitant to get their kids involved or even, you know, just adults or anybody themselves may be scared to, to, to join in or participate. So what advice do you all have for those parents and individuals who might be scared or hesitant to, to get involved? What, what would you say to them to encourage um, participation? Do you want to go, Jamie? Oh, well, listen, <laughs> being, being a parent of three children, my daughter was born with my same neuromuscular disease. And at first, um, doctors questioned her and said, oh, she'll never walk again. And guess what? She's riding horses. She's swimming. She's mono skiing. Um, she's dancing. She appeared in a first universal picture with Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson called Marry Me. The, this girl, I, I, I can't I can't slow her down. She's just she's just rolling away. And I'm so proud of her. And as a parent, I get it. There is fear. Um, because, you know, this this is your child and you know your child best. But I could also say um, 
let them make the choices. So I, you know, I when I play softball, I play um, with a spectrum of people that are disabled, um, um, and, and there's some that are on power chairs, and they play out there, and we're just patient with one another. We want to inspire one another, and we want to encourage one another. So it's about letting them be part of a family, a family that will accept them, a family that will inspire them to discover their unique talents and aptitudes in the sports world because um, it will help them in the long run. It will help them build confidence in, in job placement, going to school at college, and making decisive decisions in their lives. So this is what adaptive sports can offer. And I get it as a parent, but uh, you know, with my own daughter, I can't slow her down because she says, Daddy, there's nothing that I could do. And I love that about her. And having my same neuromuscular disease just inspires me to follow her. <laughs> so <laughs> I get it, but let's not put limits on them. Let's inspire them to be limitless. And I would just add in there, um, that was great, Jamie. I would just add, Thanks. you know, through my experience, um, you know, over the last six months attending our Move United um, events and competitions, you know, I think, I think one of the most um, rewarding parts uh, for me is seeing parents of the youth who are competing connect with one another and uh, create a community amongst themselves. So the community is not just for the athletes, but it's for the parents and families as well. And they find strength in that community and they find other resources that they're sharing with one another. And, um, you know, the, the world becomes a little bit smaller when you have that connection of, you know, great community. And um, I think that's one of the, the really great benefits for our Move United Youth programs is that, you know, the, it's not just the opportunities for the kiddos, but um, it's the opportunities for the parents and families as well. And I think that's really great. So that's a good point. That's a real good point. Thank you. And we actually, um, Sarah, my colleague, actually put the link to the article about Jamie's daughter, Leah, um, in the chat. That's a great read for anybody. So thank you both. I am not a parent, but I have a niece who recently started uh, dance and tumbling. And the first time she took off doing a handstand scared me to, to death just watching her. So um, I can't imagine that feeling of, if you know, having children. So I think that that's great, Jamie um, and, and Dr. McCauley say, or just that perspective of letting them try it. What's the harm in trying, right? Um, so Jamie um, and, and Dr. Uh, McCauley Sayer, I don't know if you've seen anything since you've been with M Move United, but just wondering what are like, what's your greatest memory related to adaptive sports and recreation? You want to go first, Kaylee? Sure. I think, um, I mean, uh, <laughs> my, sorry, my dog is in the background. He's being a little moody because it's, no, it's okay. It's okay. dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would say um, when I was the director of accessibility at Lewis and Clark College, um, I worked with a student uh, who is, is blind. And um, he really wanted to engage in um, our college outdoors program um, at the time, outdoor recreation, skiing, hiking, um, all the things outdoors. And um, I think that was really my first uh, opportunity to work with, um, you know, work in adaptive sport. And I didn't even really know it at the time. But um, it really was the start um, and uh, sort of catalyst for me applying for this position with Move United, uh, working with him and going through the process and, you know, educating myself on the opportunities that were available to him. And, um, you know, also like challenging my biases with his uh, capabilities um, and advocating for him with other staff members, uh, coaches that you know, we were working with to make sure he had all the same opportunities that any other college student had to participate in this college outdoors program. Um, and so, yeah, I think about him often in the work that I'm doing at, at Move United. 
Um, so that's probably my my most favorite. Um, the the memory that comes to mind is when he came back from his first cross country ski trip, and the stories that he was telling me from that uh, three day trip uh, in uh, in Oregon. So mm. that would that would be my favorite memory. I think. Awesome. Um, one of my favorite memories that I I have is the accomplishment of, phys- of, of um, right after the COVID pandemic, um, training with Achilles International in hand cycling and participating in my first marathon ever. And, um, and it was the New York half marathon. And uh, we suffered a lot of loss here in, in New York City, especially in Brooklyn with loved ones and, and community members. And um, why I trained for that one, I doubted myself. I said, "Man, can I really finish this? This is this is 15 miles from from Brooklyn to to Central Park." And I'll tell you, when I was in the Manhattan Bridge and I saw the sunlight come out, and I was hand cycling, and I really thought about what we went through in New York, and 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 um, just participating of that was a highlight in my life, and finishing. Um, just seeing so many families and loved ones that that really suffered loss, we were able to come together uh, as an adaptive sport athlete in and participating in a marathon was one of the highlights that I'll never forget in my life, and it'll stay benchmarked forever. That's great. Is that what we saw in the video? Is that from that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I nice. thought I was literally going to pass out going up the Manhattan Bridge, but. Um, Thank God I made it. <laughs> I made it all the way through, and it was a wonderful accomplishment. And I did it for all and all of those um, loved ones that that passed in New York. Yeah, um, that was a highlight of my life. That's great. Thanks, Jamie. Oh, you're so welcome. we've got just kind of just one more question planned out, but it looks like we've got some stuff in the chat that the women can get to. So, uh, just wondering. Um, both of you, if you're if you're working with someone who wants to try something um, and it doesn't work out or it's not a very good fit, um, what, what what might you tell that individual or share with them um, to kind of fight that discouragement that might pop up there? Okay, want to go first? <laughs> yeah, I would. I would just say to you know. To try again. Um, there's so many different sports and recreational opportunities out there um, that you know the first one you try, it might not be the best fit for you, and that's okay. Um, get out there and try again. Like, <laughs> Did, didn't you say that Move United has seventy plus activities? Yeah, there's just a handful, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't even name 70 different activities. So that's great. Thank you so much. Jamie? Yeah, I just got off the phone like right before this meeting and um and it was someone who has a disability and wanted to partake of 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 football tournament that we're about to have and um we're going to have it next Saturday. And they were asking, um, you know, what what are the qualifications? And they they um, disclose certain weaknesses that they have. And I, I say, listen, the first thing you could do is come watch. Um, if if and get exposed to it. If if you feel it's something that you can do, then you know we'll talk. And then and if it's something that you could participate in, we'll train you in. Mm-hmm. And it, and then we we would offer other sports, um, whether it be basketball, lacrosse, ice hockey tennis, um, pickleball, um, things that they would like, um, and, and things that might, we might not offer now that we know move United will, you know, we will work together as a team until we find something that they're good in. The, the, the thing we want to do is not turn anyone away. We want them to come in and, and be part of it. And I want the neuromuscular disease community to be part of it because we're awesome. We're awesome, and nothing can slow us down. We're special. We're rare, and and the world just needs to see our talents out there. And um, I could tell you, like I've shared with uh, with the MDA, I've, I've been participating in a lot of adaptive sports, 
and I play with a lot of disabled community members in New York City. I can only speak for New York, but it's rare that I meet with someone with a rare neuromuscular disease. I'm meeting all types of disabilities and wonderful people that they are, but I wanna see more of the neuromuscular disease community out there. And um, I, I want you to be part of it because you don't know what you're missing. You have talent, you're special, and you're valued, and you're awesome. Jamie, I have no doubt that people listening after this and listening to you talk about it are going to be Googling and looking up whatever they can do to join. It's amazing how passionate you are about this. So um, if you all don't care, we'll move into some of the uh, questions in the chat. Um, so the first one looks like, have you guys seen the MDA slow pitch softball bat? Any the experience with that? The slow pitch softball bat? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't seen it. I know what a slow pitch softball is, and I know what a bat is, but I've never seen that. That's interesting. <laughs> um, Mila, I just want to jump in here. Um, I did link um, an MDA article in the chat about the softball bat, so you guys can learn more about that. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, very cool. I'll have to read that article later on. Thanks, Sarah. Um, looks like Ben just wanted to share um, that they are an adaptive cyclist that discovered recumbent cycles about five years ago as a way to stay active in spite of my FSHD condition. Um, they completely agree with Jamie that the physical benefits are amazing, but the mental and emotional benefits that come from being active are life changing. So thank you so much, Ben, for sharing. Thank you, Ben. Can I also share something um, about that? Um, the confidence level. I would sure. this year alone. Um, this year alone, I, I was I participated in, in at both Yankee Stadium and City Field to be on the ground for first pitch at City Field, and I was invited to be at Yankee Stadium in the same year to be at ground level on the field before the game. In, in honoring our, our, our achievements in the World Series at, in Chicago and being part of a first pitch at City Field. And I never thought I would be able to do this, but just participating and being part of a team provided that opportunity. And I want many in the neuromuscular disease community to have the opportunities that I've been experiencing. And that has done amazing things for my confidence. And I really appreciate that. Awesome, Jamie. Um, so let's see, Graham asks, what advice would you have about trying to find limits on activity without injury and possibly the recovery process? Mm -hmm. Well, for my experience, um, like for um, this year, um, I, I sort of like overdid it in, in playing um wheelchair softball I sort of like I caught this thing called golfer's elbow because I swing with one arm playing softball and I was like oh my goodness and I hurt myself so the recovery was staying off that elbow for at least two months but I'm so active in adaptive sports now you know I'm, I'm addicted I need to be active because if not I feel like I'll atrophy but everybody's body is very different so depending on injury depending on recovery, following up with your primary care physician and letting them know what possible injuries are occurring. You, you weigh those things out and you make the judgments for your body. And, and, and then hopefully recovery will come. But uh, you know your limits, you know what you can do. And um, I think following up with your primary care physician when whatever injury and participation of sports is essential. Yeah, and I would add, um, echo that, Jamie, and also add, you know, uh, one of the things I talked about when I was presenting is with Move United chapters, you know, we take safety, um, athlete safety very seriously with our member organization. So, you know, connecting with the Move United chapter, making sure that um, there are qualified coaches in place uh, who are experienced, who can work with you directly. Um, and are, you know, specialists in the sport that you want to learn. Um, 
you know, those things are going to be very helpful too. And you have somebody who is experienced and knows what they're doing that can coach you uh, through learning the skills for that particular sport. That's a, that's a great point. Um, when, when I experienced my injury, um, there were professionals at, at the site that provided and supplied kinesio tape around my arm in order for me to have faster recovery and more mobility in my arm. So yes, that's very essential to have those types of coaches and staff that are there at the ready. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, let's see, next question is, my eight-year-old son has congenital muscular dystrophy. He uses a power wheelchair and his upper body strength is limited too, in addition to lower body weakness. What kind of sports could he engage in? Any thoughts on that? Um, hey, you know, I, I could I could seriously see softball, an entry to softball. Um, I could totally see um, some participation um, if if they would love it, if they would love it. Um, beginners of football in handling a ball in using the power chair to learn routes. Um, also in basketball, there's um, some entry levels of basketballs for novice players and learning the game and learning how to pick and learning what to do with the with the power chair. Um, the, like um, we, we need coaches that understand disabilities as well and parent communication as well. So I'm glad that that was disclosed. But um, like I said, I play with teammates that are on power chairs and they're amazing athletes. And they use their power chairs to participate in plays. And we feed off that. And we make amazing plays one with another. And it inspires them to continue to come. So and knowing the sport and, and knowing the coach and knowing the disability would, I think, forge a, a wonderful start for any novice player wanting to participate. Yeah, um, I know power soccer is really popular with with kids um, he has power chairs um also swimming might be uh, a good option too um that uh, some kids enjoy and you know a sport like that um helps to develop um you know uh, other strength too with the the help of the water so All right. Next question. If you are still ambulatory, but walk with a cane, would they have you get in a wheelchair for tennis or pickleball? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I have a lot of teammates that are amputees and some of them are ambu ambulate. I, I can ambulate. I can walk, but I use AFOs on both sides um, for each leg because my team, my feet tend to flop and my lower extremities are a, a bit atrophied below the knee. But um, I, I, I use um, wheelchairs. They're called sports adapted wheelchairs, either made by Quickie, Top End, Performax, or RGK. And they're, they're, they're loaned to us. And you could participate using those wheelchairs. They make special wheelchairs, sports chairs for tennis. But some are multi-purpose sports chairs, like Top End all pro too. So yes, you could ambulate and, and, and participate and be awesome at the sports that you choose. And, and if you're a tennis player, that's awesome. Um, they, they have these amazing sports chairs that, that you could utilize and, and go get them at the tennis courts. In fact, we play every Friday at the Billie Jean King Center at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. in Queens. Uh, I don't know if you live in New York. If you do, you're welcome to come in hook up with us and 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 hit that ball for two straight hours. But yeah, for sure, if you ambulate, you could get on that chair as well. Jamie, you might have a whole group of people show up and, to play tennis with you. Let's do it. Your group. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get it. <laughs> All right. And then the last question that I see, if anybody else has any questions, feel free to chat those in. Do you know if programs that help with costs of starting adapted rec groups in rural areas? Mm. 
Um, I would say uh, there are a lot of grant opportunities out there. Um, also, if in a rural area, there may be parks and recreation uh, organization community as well. I'm sorry, my dog. My dog is very hungry. <laughs> no, he's answering your question as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, connecting with uh, local parks and recreation might be a good start as well. Um, yeah, we've with a lot of folks who are trying to set up programs in their area. And, we may not have uh, opportunities for them to play with grant funding, but uh, may be able to point you in the right direction as well. Yeah, um, if I may add, uh, we just started one here at the McCarran Park Recreation Center called the New York Guardians for um, um, with a, a new inclusion basketball league that has started. Um, it's called the I think it's called the National Wheelchair Basketball League Association. And um, a, a, a way to get grants, it's called through CAF, it's called um, Challenge Athletes Foundation, the Challenge Athletes Foundation, um, which you could apply for to get grants on all types of um, equipment um, and, and training. Um, in fact, um, there's a round coming up that just passed those for November 3rd, but look them up, the Challenge Athletes Foundation. And if you need further assistance in that, um, Kayla, the, the, you could reach out to me and I could send you all the direct um, connections with them. Um, we received grants from them. I know a plethora of players that have received grants and an array amount of chairs, sports chairs that um, are parts of their body, literally are their legs. Um, so those are two things that... Um, that well, that Challenge Athletes Foundation is a wonderful organization that supplies a lot of funding and a lot of grants to uh, for for people who are disabled that want to participate in wheelchairs adaptive sports. Yeah, th thanks for adding that, Jamie. Um, my my brain with the barking dog in the background. Is no, it's okay. It's okay. Not working as well, but yeah, that that is a great CAF is a great uh, organization and opportunity for folks to engage on the financial part. Um, so thanks for adding that in there. Oh, no, it's okay. It's teamwork. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I actually, I don't see any more questions. So before we start to wrap up, um, Dr. McKaylee, McCauley Sayer or Jamie, do you have any last minute tips, guidance, information? Doctor, you want to go first? Yeah, I, I shared my um, my email address and the website link in the chat. So hopefully folks got that. Um, yeah, Move United is here for uh, anyone really in the adaptive sports and recreation to serve as a resource for you. So if you ever have questions, um, feel free to reach out. Um, if we don't have the answer, we'll make sure that you get connected to the right resources. Um, but we, we have plenty of opportunities for you to get engaged and involved and uh, make sure you have the resources that you need. So feel free to, to reach out at any time and uh, we'll make sure, you know, you have the support that you need to, to get going. Awesome. And to my neuromuscular disease family, whether you're a child, a young adult, an adult or a family member, um, and that's dealing with with someone with a neuromuscular disease. Um, participate, try it out, be inspired, um, be galvanized, forge relationships, partake of these safe havens. It's changed my life, um, and it's inspiring me to want to advocate for many others. Uh, you are special to me. You are valued, and you're awesome. And there's sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Uh, we're rare. And we're, we're coming um, to a park or recreation center or to a sports activity near you. And I want to see a lot of people with the neuromuscular disease community, all the crowds, and mesmerize people because we are a special group and we are a family. Thank you both so, so much. We, Jamie, we're getting a lot of comments about your passion for this area. So we're so glad that you are here um, and, and able to share with us today. So I'm going to um, share my screen again so we can just kind of do our last minute wrap up session.
So again, we just want to say thank you so much, Kaylee and Jamie, for all the wonderful information and insight and guidance and advice and information and everything. It was just just so helpful. Um, so again, we just sincerely appreciate your time and expertise and everything you do for the neuromuscular community. So we would love to hear your comments about this webinar. If you have a smartphone, open your camera and point it at the QR code on the screen. A web page will pop up with a short survey on today's webinar. If you don't have a smartphone or don't want to use the QR code, um, once the webinar is over, you'll be directed to the survey. You'll get an email with that link. If you have any questions about this webinar, please feel free to email them to mdaengage at mdausa.org and we'll follow up with you. If you are new to the MDA through this program and are diagnosed with a neuromuscular disease under MDA's umbrella or are a loved one of someone who is diagnosed, we encourage you to stay engaged with MDA. You can do this by visiting mda.org slash join and completing a short form. This will keep you up to date on the latest information and education to help keep family informed in the neuromuscular community. This concludes today's MDA Engage webinar on adaptive sports and recreation. Again, Dr. Macaulay Sayer and Jamie, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. And thank you all for attending. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye.